What I can tell you is that when somebody leaves that meeting, only four people of 12 claim that they have been fully heard. Good morning, everybody. So let me welcome you to a meeting that is happening everywhere and anywhere around the world. In this case, we've got a, um, an organization where the CEO and the CFO have negotiated together that there need to be cost reductions. I'm sure that is not happening in any of your organizations today. <laughs> the CIO is earnestly working to come up with a cost reduction plan that most likely involves centralization of IT services that might be a little crunchy to some of the division leaders. So what do they do? This CHO, a CIO, what she does is she works with her team diligently. She puts a plan together. She, of course, bakes it heavily with the CFO. She pre-sells it to the CEO because this upcoming meeting is one where she wants to get in and out of pretty easily. And all of a sudden, she goes in and she gives a report out. Now, what's happening during that report out? You've got the chief marketing officer giving a DM underneath the table to the division president and saying, this is ridiculous. You've got a GM who's a bit of a hothead saying out loud that this is ridiculous, which makes the CEO a bit uncomfortable and says, we can take that offline. And then what you have is you have somebody sitting there smugly saying, I know I'm having dinner with the CEO tonight. I can lobby effectively. I'm just going to be quiet. And then there's a whole group of folks that are really smart and see the risks, but they have decided that they don't have a dog in this hunt, so they'll sit there quietly. Does this sound familiar at all to anybody's meetings? OK, so let me explain from a data perspective. What I can tell you is that when somebody leaves that meeting, only four people of 12 claim that they have been fully heard. The average meeting of 12 individuals only have four people claim that they're fully heard. Now, if I wrap that up, let me now take you to a different meeting. This is a meeting that most likely is born in the executive team of a digitally native company. In fact, our data shows, and I'll talk a little bit about it, that in fact, only 15% of our 2000 team data set actually is doing this kind of meeting that I'm about to talk about. And they are digital natives. Most likely, the CEO went to Stanford, um, happened to have been a Harvard Business School person myself, but the CEO went to Stanford. And what's happening is that individual was born and weaned on the Google stack of editing technologies. They have been working on Google Docs. They have been working on Google Sheets from a very early stage. And this group of individuals, let me tell you what the CIO does. The first thing is that before the CIO thinks that they've baked everything, what she's done is she has put together a sheet. And in that sheet, she's listed the 12 names of the people that will eventually be in the meeting along the left-hand side. And on the top, she's actually given a bit of a presentation where she has said the following three things. Here's what we know, and here's what we're currently doing. Here's where I'm struggling, and I think it's going to be crunchy to all of us. And then the third piece is, here's where we're planning to go. This has been sent out in an editable document that's shown to all 12 individuals that will be in the meeting. Those individuals know that we have a social contract, that we have to fill this out in advance. And what's being asked of them is three different questions next to their names, so that there's accountability for who is saying what. What's next to their names in the first question is, what challenges do I see that others might not? What innovations or bold solutions might I create that others don't necessarily see? And what offers of help or support or meetings might I offer as a result? 12 individuals, because they've got a social contract to do pre-work, to do asynchronous work. Many of your organizations, when, you're, when somebody asks somebody to do pre-work, there's that awkward moment in the room where everybody says, did we read this document? And somebody's like, well, blah, 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 blah. I read some of it. Blah, blah, blah. And the next thing you realize, we're going back and reading the whole report out again. Does this sound familiar? But in this other place, there's a social contract. Know that they're doing their pre-work because they have meeting shifted. They have time shifted. They have built an entire round of collaboration before the meeting. Now, what happens as a result of this? What happens as a result of this, number one, is 100% of people have their point of view on the piece of paper, right, in the, in the digital realm. Eight out of 12 people will say that they've been fully heard. Even, even though all of them have written their language down, there's some people who just don't think they're ever heard, so they've written eight out of 12 people have said they're fully heard. Some of the other data that I think is interesting is that the individuals that are more reflective have had a chance to think about their answers. 
Not everybody on the spot in a room can be that bold, right? And let's talk about inclusion for a second. In this new world of the 15 percenters, the digital disruptors, they're eating the lunch of those other teams. In this new world, what's happening is that not only 12 people have filled this out, but somebody has filled it out and said, guess what? I think Jane, two layers down, has more of a dog in the hunt than I do. I'm going to send this along to her, and she's going to fill it out as well. Now, we usually have up to 30 people filling out this tapestry, this collaborative remote hybrid tapestry that's going on. And it's bold. It's actually what we have found is if you do asynchronous work, it's 85% higher degrees of psychological safety. Very similar, I saw the lady from, from uh, Microsoft uh, here a second ago. If you just used the, the breakout room in a, in a virtual meeting, that also significantly increases psychological safety. But what have we done? We've only ported physical meetings in boardrooms to physical meetings in virtual rooms, and we've still stayed in the large group of 12 having the same conversation even though new tools were available to us. Are you getting the point that we are barely scratching the surface of the use of the digital tools that the digital natives have been really robustly using? And a few other things. First of all, what we've done is we've reduced the cycle time of change. Because you've shifted the collaboration to one week of conversation up front, you've showed up in the meeting, and the person leading the agenda could have figured out what the actual questions are, where the real gritty issues are. Let's bring those up so the meeting's agenda has changed, and we can land the plane in the meeting, as opposed to the old meeting. You get into the meeting, you bump around, you don't have full transparency, and you're like, we need another meeting on that. Does that make sense? Well, we don't have to have that. All of this has been available for over a decade. We started our research in 2010, published 12 articles between Forbes and the Harvard Business Review on the subject of what are the new people rules in an increasingly virtual world. And five people, including my mother, listened and read those articles. <laughs> 2020, for some reason, a few people started to care. We raised $5 million, and we went on this research binge where we've been able to create this kind of research. And what we find is that the buy-in is significantly higher. There was a wonderful case study that we wrote up. The buy-in is significantly higher because people have co-created. Now, let me say, what's the takeaway? I beg to suggest, and I've been at this since 2010, preaching as much as I possibly could. We have been coaching, training, and researching high-performing teams using and leveraging the digital tools that have been available to us for a very long time now. None of these things have just been created except a couple of things you might have been hearing about more recently in AI, but these have been around. And so my challenge is that you leaving it to the momentum of the habits and rituals and practices of your old organizations to organically get their way there, it's not true. We came out of the rubble of the pandemic and we did, we went back to work. I'm suggesting, please, go forward to work. There's an opportunity now and this beautiful inflection point to recreate work. I look around the audience today, and, and we, so what we have done is we have created a model. What is a world-class digital hybrid team? And it's a level of zero to five. And that's what I mentioned earlier. Our research shows in our 2000 data set only 15% of teams are anywhere near four and five. And almost all of the organizations that I was going through the, the, uh, the list coming in here, almost all of your organizations are struggling down at two. Does that make sense to you? So what you need to do is you have to demand that your teams are going to four and five. And it is not, by the way, the arbitration of policy. Policy is where you get spun around. Are we two days? Are we five days? I don't give a damn because you've been hybrid before the pandemic. As soon as you throw up two office buildings, you're hybrid. What I care about, are you digitally forward?